Hello and welcome to Switch Connect program. I am Ananya Talwar, technical marketing engineer with HP Aruba Networking. And today we are going to talk about Switch Connect program, which is all about interconnects and how these interconnects help you to deploy your networks efficiently and most importantly, how to use them smartly to make the best use of it. So let's get started. Before starting or delving deep into the technicalities, let's just look at certain terms which you might come across a lot during this videos and which are quite much important to focus on, such as modal bandwidth. Uh, modal bandwidth is maximal signaling rate for which the given for a given distance or a maximal distance for a given signaling rate. That's why it's calculated as the product of bandwidth and distance, typically expressed in megahertz kilometer. Now patch panels. Many of you have already uh, been aware of patch panels, what patch panels are. So patch panels are basically these hardware devices which are deployed in your networks, in your data centers, and all you have to do is use a patch cable from your switch port to your patch panel and be behind those panels lie your structured cable. So for instance, you have to take your link for hundred of meters. Now you don't need to use that hundred meter cable to create that link. All you need is a small patch cable that can connect your switch port to your patch panel and that patch panel will take care of moving your link for all across 100 meters. That is a part of structured cabling laid in your data centers. Another one is form factor. So form factor is basically the term in context of the transceiver which defines the shape and size and the electrical interface of the device. So there are three categories of form factor. The first one is SM, also known as small form factor. The another one is quad small form factor, abbreviated as QSFP, and then quad small form factor pluggable double density, also known as QSFPDD, which again is abbreviated as QDD. So for small form factor, usually, not usually, actually, for small form factor, only a single channel is used for transmission. For quad small form factor, as the word quad is included, that quad signifies that four channels are used to transmit your data. On the other hand, for QDD, that double density indicates that you have eight channels to transfer your data over that particular link. The physical appearance, shape, and size of all these form factors are very different from each other. For instance, you cannot put a QSFP transceiver directly into your SFP port because the shape, size of a QSFP transceiver is a little bit bigger than your SFP one. And same goes for the QDD as well. Attenuation is another important term when we come across the transceiver. So what does attenuation mean? Think of it this way. You are st standing at a particular distance and I say something to you, for instance, hey, and you heard me clearly. Now I asked you to move a certain distance backwards. And I again said, hey, now my voice will be a little bit lower than what it used to be earlier. This is no, this is because of attenuation. As much as the signal needs to be traveled, the, as the distance increases, the signal strength actually decreases. And uh, it is the case for sound signals. The similar is for the electrical signal as well. So when you are try trying to transmit your data over a certain link and it needs to be traveled for a certain distance, slowly and gradually it loses its power and then the signal gets lower and lower. That is because of the attenuation. Now, another thing is channel. So the con combination of data paths used to receive and transmit data makes up a channel. Now let's look at the interconnect options we currently offer in HP Aruba networking. We currently broadly offer three major interconnect types. The first one is direct attached copper cable, usually known as DAC cables. Another one is AOCs, which is apti active optical cables. And the last one is transceiver modules that we offer. So for the first one, direct attached copper co cable, it has two electrical interfaces at the end of a copper cable. 
For the next one, you have the similar interface at the end of a cable, but this time the cable is actually an optical cable, which is made up of optical fiber. For the third one, we actually have a transceiver module, which is connected to a connector, which is again connected to a transmission cable, which can be of multiple types. Actually, all of these three elements can be of multiple types. For instance, your transceiver module can be SFP, subjected to one gig SFP plus, SFP 28 and so on. On the other hand, your connector might be LC, SN, MPO 12, MPO 16 and other, others, or your transmission cable can be of MMF type, SMF type or the other ones. Talking about your cables, so based on transmission medium, cables can be categorized into two broad categories. So the first one is copper and the second one is fiber optic. So for the first one, it is the cable is actually made up of copper and it is again of five types. The first one is CAT5E, e, CAT6, CAT6A and CAT7. For the fiber optic, similarly, we have two subcategories that single mode and multi-mode. Where the multi-mode actually has other uh, subtypes, which is known as OM1, OM2, OM3, up to OM5. So let's understand what is copper cable. So the copper copper cable is constructed using a twisted pair of copper uh, copper wires. So this twisting actually helps to reduce the electromagnetic interference and crosstalk between adjacent pairs. As I mentioned, twisted pair copper cables are actually come in different categories. That is category 5E, category 6, 6A and 7. The properties of copper cable includes bandwidth, which ranges between 100 megahertz to 600 megahertz. That's for CAT5, E to CAT7 respectively. Next is data transmission rates, which is up to 10 Gbps when using copper transceivers and up to 100 Gbps when using DAC cables. Now for the transmission distance, it supports somewhere around 10 meter to be compliant. For these copper cables, they are actually terminated with the RJ545 connectors using the ethernet cable. Now proper connection is actually crucial for maintaining signal integrity and minimizing the signal loss. The benefits of copper cable includes the cost effective solution, obviously, compared to the other types of networking cables. Such as fiber ones, copper are actually cheaper. Compatibility, yes, it's compatible over the wide range of HP or Uber switches. And reliability provides a reliable network connectivity with minimal signal interference. So now it's time to understand their optic fiber cable. So the construction of fiber optic cable is pretty much similar. You have a coating on outside in which you have a cladding and insert inside which you have your core, which is actually your fiber, which is taking your data from one point to another. Now, th th there are two types of optic fiber speaking broadly. Uh, it's single mode fiber, SMF, and the multi-mode fiber, MMF. The properties of the optic cable includes the high bandwidth capability supporting data rates from lower megabits to the terabits, and the data transmission rates, which is up to 400 uh, gigabits per second when you are using optical transceivers. And the transmission distance is ranging from 500, somewhere around 500 meter to 70 kilometers approximately. Now the optic fibers are actually terminated using multiple types of connectors. It can be your LC connectors, your SN connectors, or can be your MTP or MPO connectors. And benefits obviously includes high speed data transmission, significantly higher than what you, you used to get from your copper cables. And it allows a longer transmission distance as well and is obviously immune to electromagnetic interference. 
Now let's dive into the different types of optic fiber cable as I was mentioning. The first one is single mode fiber and the other one is multi mode fiber. It can be differentiated on different properties. For instance, the first one is on the basis of diameter. On the basis of diameter, your SMF cable has a core which is around 8 to 10 micrometers. On the other hand, multi-mode fiber has its core around 50 to 62 point micrometers. So you can see the vast difference between the cores of each of these types of fibers. Another one is the mode of propagation. This is the property due to which each of these fiber types got its name. So the single mode fiber only allows the fundamental mode of light to travel through it. But in case of multi-mode fiber, it allows the multiple, multiple modes of light to travel through that thicker fiber core. Now, on the other hand, single mode fiber actually offers you the higher bandwidth capabilities. Whereas multi-mode fiber a little bit lower than what your single mode fiber offers you. Now the longer distance transmission. This is very important to understand as a property of this fiber. Let's take an example. So think of it this way. You're trying to pass a light through a very small fiber core. That is for the single mode fiber. Now because you're passing through a very small diameter when the light is traveling through it, there's very less dispersion because there's no space for the light to get into the angles and disperse. Even if there is a uh, dispersion, it can practically considered as zero dispersion. And that's why light does not travel uh, extra, an extra distance, rather it travels straight and reaches the other point. Whereas in case of multi-mode, because the diameter of a core is bit larger when the light travels through it a lot of dispersion happens inside the fiber due to which the actual distance of light traveling through the fiber increases and due to which the signal strength is lost between that so when it reaches the other side you have to check that it will not be able to travel a lot of distance as compared to the single mode fiber hence because of this property you might have you might have seen or you will always see that for a long haul communication mostly the single mode fiber is used or preferred and for the short communication or shorter distance transmission you usually use multi mode fiber now as i was mentioning in my earlier chart that there are multiple types of multi mode fiber for instance as I was saying, there were uh, there are OM1, OM2, OM3, and OM4. Now these can be differentiated on the basis of one diameter, speci especially for the OM1 and the rest of them. OM1 has a core diameter for about 62.5 micrometers. As seen for the rest of them, it is about 50 micrometers. Another property that differentiates each of them is the modal bandwidth. As you can see, for same wavelength, all of these fiber has different modal bandwidth. So, because of the built of these fiber grades, as we move from OM1 to OM4, the attenuation offered by each of these actually decreases. Now, because there is less attenuation, you are able to travel farther distances. It's actually inversely proportional. When there is less attenuation in your communication, you might be able to get a longer transmission distance of communication. But if it's more attenuation, you won't be able to take that transmission away very far. So the next important part of the transceiver is the connector. We have already seen how what types of your cables are and how is it built. It's time to understand your connectors as well. Commonly, we used to we see these two types of connectors in our transceivers, which are known as legacy LC connectors, which has two fiber uh, ferrules out there, and it works with your duplex optical cable. Another type of connector is this MPO connectors, which, which comes in two broad categories. One is MPO 12 and MPO 16. The 12 signify, signifies that there are 12 pins of fiber fibers in there 
in the center of this connector, as you can see right here. For MPO16, similarly, it has 16 interface of fiber connections, which is right there. Physically speaking, both MPO12 and MPO16 look a very alike, so it's important to differentiate between two, and you should not mistake while inserting it in your, in your trans transceiver modules. That is why for MPO12 and MPO16, you see there is a difference in how this key is there. For MPO12, it's in the middle, but for MPO16, it's offset on the left side so that you do not insert the wrong uh, connector in your transceiver module. Now, there is recently we introduced another connector which is known as SN connector. It is very similar to your LC connector since it's using similar optical cable, but what's different is it's actually very small as compared to the LC connector. And the fiber positions are aligned vertically rather than horizontally, which is in case of your LC connectors. The last one is RJ45, which works with your Ethernet copper cables. So when we talk about a transceiver, most of the information what you want to know about a transceiver is actually mentioned in its description. For instance, let's take an example and understand what each of these info part of this information signifies. So for instance, I have taken the example of your here 10 gig SFP plus LC LR SR transceiver. Let's take it one by one. So the first part is your 10 gig, which is the maximum speed supported by this module transceiver module. It can be 1 gig, 25 gig, 50 gig or 400 gig instead of 10 gig. Other part is the SFP, which is the physical form factor. As I was mentioning earlier, we have broadly three types of physical form factors, SFP, QSFP and QSFP DD. So you might interchangeably see SFP, QSFP or a QDD instead of this uh, key SFP part. Another one is this plus, which is mentioned next to your physical form factor, which is the version of form factor subjected to maximum speed. For instance, SFP plus is subjected to your 10 gig speeds. SFP 28 is your 25 gig and SFP 56 is your 50 gig speeds. So that's how attaching these different symbols about after your form factors may help you to understand your uh, um, your maximum speed or your supported speed. Another one, another part is the LC, which uh, signifies the connector type which your transceiver module supports. It can be LC, MPO12, MPO16, or probably SN. The last part is a very interesting one, which is SR. Now, what does this mean? So you might have heard very often, we usually mention our transceivers as 10 gig SR, 10 gig LR, or probably 10 gig ER. So what does this SR, LR, and ER means? These are basically the standards of achievable distance, and each of these different standards signifies a certain distance. These there are, uh, I have mentioned the other variants of these, such as SR, LR, DR, or FR. So we'll stop it right here. And in the next video, we'll talk about what these standard of achievable distance means. How, how do I understand these and how each of these are different? So see you in the next video. Till then, bye.